holiday, which is the celebration of the sun god dying and rebirth during the winter solstice. Where the Druids actually celebrated, the, like the world is celebrating, decorating a tree and giving gifts and decorating it with red and gold and silver. Yeah. I think you ought to repent right now. If you, if you did not think about Jesus at all on December 25th, you should repent right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us, O oh Lord, to realize that we are not of this world, O oh God, that we are in the womb of the church, O oh Lord, and we are being birthed. And you are our pattern, the birth of the Savior, that you might be born in us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, forgive us, O oh Lord, if we have not thought about your birth on the 25th or the, the midnight of the 24th, O oh God. In Jesus' name, now would you thank him for forgiving you? <clears throat> Hallelujah. I said, would you thank him for forgiving you? I don't know if you're awake or not. Would you praise him for forgiving you in the name of anybody need forgiveness in this house? Praise God. The womb was needed for the Savior of the world to be born, spiritually, that is. Mary was a vessel that God chose. And in Luke chapter 1, and Mary arose in those days, went into the hill country, with haste into the city of Judah of praise, and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted or saluted Elizabeth, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby or the babe in her womb leaped, it reacted to her voice, to the greeting, because the kingdom of God is voice activated. If you can't, if you feel a resistance to worship God audibly and pray audibly out loud, that is a demonic resistance right. that you need to rebuke. Right. It might be coupled with pride. That's why the Bible over and over again, if you study it out, it is a noisy church. Yes, right. It's a shout yeah. unto the Lord. Yeah. With the voice of triumph. Sing aloud. Blow the trumpet in silence. And she spake out with a what? Loud. A loud voice. Loud voice. And said, Blessed art thou among women, yeah. and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And that is Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise. A womb is simply a place of gestation. Gestation means to, to develop its process that is involved over a period of time. It, that's where maturation comes and happens. That's where the ripening happens, the formation, the incubation. Growing up as a child in the Philippines, I remember watching eggs of chickens in an incubator hatch. Have you ever seen that? I mean, not in pictures, but I'm talking about real live ones. And, and I remember uh, with the many, many businesses that my dad had, and, and I think at some point we, we sold, you know, poultry to Magnolia or I can't remember now, but, but I, I remember there's this incubator, and, and as a child, I, I, would, I would look in there and I would see, and, and I would wait for the day where these chicks would begin to break egg shell and the, the beak will come up and there's little you know little head will come up and little little sound <laughs> and, and they're usually wet and they're they're ugly. Yeah. I mean just just ugly. And, and it takes about 21 days to hatch, which is interesting because it takes 21 days to develop a hatch. And once it hatches, and, and for it to hatch, the humidity has to be just right. The temperature, which is really just a heat lamp, 
strategically placed in an incubator has to be a certain temperature for the maximum number of eggs to hatch. And, and then as it huddles on the side where the heat lamp is and the feathers begin to dry up and, 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 and over a few days then they, they look cute and yellow. And they begin to run around and they begin to eat and, and, and they're mature as far as completion is concerned. They're fully developed. Everything that they have, they already have. And when you begin to think about that, we also are in an incubator. Yes, sir. We are either incubated in the Jerusalem that is above or in the incubator called the world. It's our choice. You are either in the house of God, in the womb of the church, being developed to maturity, to completion, or you're in the womb of the world trying to conform you to their ways. Why? Because the first womb, the natural, the physical, was faulty because of sin. Romans chapter 5, 14, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, so death reigned because Adam missed them. Even though we did not sin just like Adam did. At least not exactly like him. Who is the figure of him that was to come. So Adam uh, is a figure of Jesus Christ. The person who was to come. Jesus Christ is the second Adam. Amen. That he was going to rectify what Adam messed up. Aren't you thankful for the plan of God? That he fixes things. In Jesus' name. He said, but not as the offense, uh, so also is the free gift. Yeah. Some say free gift. free gift. Did you like the gifts you got for Christmas? Yeah. Am I there? Yeah. Did, you, did you have some gifts you did not like? I think you got so much stuff that, you know, you kind of sometimes recycle gifts. And you pray that you remember who gave it to you, that you don't give it back to them in return. In Jesus' name. So also the three both, for through the offense of one, that is to Adam, may be dead, much more the grace of God, that, and the gift by grace, which is by one man Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. So one man messed it up. And so by one man Jesus Christ, he made it right. In Jesus' name, he gave us the grace of God, the gift of the power and the grace of God abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. God justifies many people when they receive the gift. Amen. When they receive the gift. Now the word gift is a little misleading in the English language because when we think about gift, uh, we think it's optional. Right? We think, well, I, I, could, I, could, I have the option not to receive the gift. But that's not true scripturally. It's a misconception. The gift of the Holy Ghost is not optional. Hello? It is an insult to the giver. Amen. When you do not receive the gift. Amen. In some cultures, that is still true today. If you go to the Philippines, mostly in the, in the, in the mountainous areas, uh, whether you're hungry or not, when they offer you food, you eat. Because the gift, if you refuse it, it is, it is an insult. Think about this. How would you feel if somebody that loves you offers you a gift and that person that you love uh, always resists it? And no, I, I don't want to do that. No, I'm fine. And maybe there's you, uh, pride involved there or what have you. It's an insult. Isn't it? And really what that person is saying when they refuse to give, if 
you love them, they are not really loving you back in return. Wow, wow. By not receiving wow. the gift. It becomes about it becomes about them now. Wow. Yeah. Not about the gift giver. Right. We don't we don't deserve the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. It's not about how deserving we are, but it's about the gift giver, Jesus Christ, who is deserving. It's about him, the preciousness of the gift that he gives, the value that the gift that he gives says more about the giver than the receiver. Right? So when somebody gives you a gift that's expensive, what do you think about that person?
scriptures and just just stand on that one scripture that, and, and hinge your salvation and, and risk your salvation on that one scripture where the Bible says that's just the inception, the start the, of your race. So what happens in this incubator determines where we're going. And just as the baby in the womb has no clue how long it's going to be in the womb, we also don't know how long we're going to be in the womb of the church. We also don't know how long we're going to live. I know hindsight is 2020, so we know about nine months, uh, right? The baby is born, uh, but the baby doesn't know. But everyone has an allotted time in this world. Moses prayed in Psalms 90. He said, Lord, uh, through all the generations, you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world from the beginning and end, you are God. For you, for some of you that have memorized it in the King James Version, it's from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You turn people back to dust, saying you turn to dust, you mortals. For you, a thousand years are the passing day as brief as the few night hours. You sweep people away like dreams that disappear, they're like grass that springs up in the morning. In the morning it blooms and flourishes, by the evening it's dry, it's withered. And we, we wither beneath your anger, we are overwhelmed by your fury. You spread our sins before you, our secrets, and you see them all. We live our lives beneath your wrath, ending our years with a groan. Seventy years are given to us, some live to be eighty. But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Nobody really knows how long each one of us are going to live. Right. Right? I know when you're young, you're like, yeah, when I'm, you know, 60. And then you turn 60, and you're like, well, maybe when I'm 70. And then when you're 70, well, maybe when I'm 80. When you're 80, well, maybe when I'm 90. Then when you're 90, you're like, well, maybe when I'm 100. Not everybody lives to be 70. My father passed away, he was 67, I believe. My, my father-in-law is knocking on the door of 90. 86? 87, soon. We target his Navy, jogs every day, lifts lightweight. Let race, eats healthy, sleeps early, wakes up early. I mean, he's physically fit. Hallelujah. But not everybody lives to be eight. And, and it's interesting because when you look at life, there's a lot of ups and downs. And I don't know what it is about the human mind. We, we, we remember the hardships more than the better times. Job 14, man is born of a woman is a few days of full of trouble. He, he cometh forth with a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. It's amazing how these scriptures weave itself together as if there is one author because there is one author. Yes. Living in different millenniums and yet they never contradict each other. It's amazing. It's the word of God. So you don't know. You and I don't know how long we have. I pray you don't croak up. Amen? Some, some are sick and we're praying for them. We're believing in God's moving and God's healing. In Jesus' name. But nobody really knows. But when death knocks at your door, it really sobers you up. It really makes you think what is valuable in life. Hallelujah. Soon all your problems disappear. Soon, uh, man, now it's just it's your life in God. Right, right. Hebrews 9, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once, I'm say once, in the end of the world, have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's proof right there that Jesus is coming back in this dispensation of grace. Right. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. There's no reincarnation. You're not going to come back to a butterfly or a dog or a spider 
or praying mantis. <laughs> Man, I was, look, I was watching a video yesterday about praying mantis. It's, it's an amazing creature. Some, some of them could eat birds, little snakes. and it, It's just amazing. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's appointed once to die, and then after that is the judgment. So Christ was offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. Jesus is coming back at the end of this world or the end of this age, this dispensation. It's an appointed time. Death is simply a doorway into eternity. And if you're looking and anticipating for his coming, he's going to appear to you. Anybody looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a set time that he's going to come. In Jesus' name while we're being born in the womb of the church. The baby while it's in the womb is sustained by the umbilical cord. Right? So it's like an astronaut. <laughs> right. Just kind of floating in there, a little umbilical cord attached to the mom. It, it, it's being, it's like it, it's, it's in a sauna. And it's, it's, it's temperature controlled. It's, it's amazing. It doesn't want to leave. Actually, they did a study without the contractions of the womb. The, the baby doesn't want to leave. It just wants to stay there. Because it's paradise in there. Hallelujah. And it's not breathing yet. Obviously, right? Or it's going to drown. So the lungs are there. But it's not breathing. All the oxygen is coming through the sustenance. The nourishment is coming through this connection it has with the mother. And, it, and when you study all of that, and especially all of creation, it bears witness that there is a God. Amen. If you study the birth of a child and how a mother could actually give birth to a child. If you have some spiritual sense, you'll realize there is a God. Right. This is not an accident. I, I've been in the delivery room twice, obviously for my kids. And it's amazing to watch my wife and to know women can give birth to a child. Right. I mean, it's like, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I'm a man. <laughs> Friends, I can't do that. Right. I can't stand that kind of pain. Right. Oh my goodness, I'll cheer you on <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> but it is amazing. Praise God. Romans 1 verse 18, for God's Holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. Right. For that which is known about God is evident to them and made plain in their inner conscience, consciousness rather, because God Himself has shown it to them. Shown it to them. So God in every conscious mind has filled them with the knowledge of God. But they're repressing it. For since the creation of the world, His invisible nature and attributes, that is, His eternal power and divinity, have been made intelligible and clearly discernible in and through the things that have been made, His handiworks. So men, mankind, are without excuse right. not to know that there's a God. Altogether without any defense or justification of reading from the amplified person. Because when they knew and recognized him as God, they did not honor and glorify him as God or give him thanks. But instead, they became futile and godless in their thinking. With vain imaginations, foolish reasonings, and stupid. <laughs> I guess that's in the Bible. Speculations. And their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming themselves, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Professing to be smart, they became simpletons of themselves. That's talking especially about the scientists 
and those that discover things, and they repress this nagging, drawing in their spirit. In fact, there's more scientists now and doctors that believe in God because you can't help uh, if you open up your soul to believe there is a God in Jesus' name. And you know that there is a God. Amen? Uh, those of us that have heard the word of God and have experienced God uh, himself, we are without excuse uh, if we don't seek to understand the eternal purposes of we have to seek that. You have to seek his will every day. So see every day. Every day. You can't be on autopilot and just, you know, kind of like, la, 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 la. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. No, you got to seek the will of God every day. How do you seek the will of, word of God? Well, you got to have an umbilical cord connected to the mother, which is the church that flows, amen, from your father in Jesus' name. That's why the Bible says you got to pray without ceasing. you got to have that connection every day. John 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. So if there's a true vine, there's a false vine that we can connect ourselves to, right? That make yeah. sense? So if you're connecting yourself, downloading from the world, downloading from the, the devil, believing lies, then that's what's coming through you. But Jesus is inviting us to be part of the true, true vine. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. That he may bring forth more fruit. Now let me let you in a secret. He's not talking about fruit as in grapes. He's talking about us. He's talking about people. So if you and I don't bear fruit, he's going to take us away, which means we're going to be condemned into eternity without God. But if you're bearing fruit, then he's going to purge you. You're going to go through some trials. Thinking about strange, brethren, concerning the fiery trials that come yeah. upon us, or some strange thing, Peter said, has happened to you. But the trying of your faith is much more precious than that of gold that, that perishes, though it be tried in the fire. If your highest goal is to make heaven here on earth, you'll be greatly disappointed. Right. If your highest goal is to be comfortable, to have, have as little stress as possible, it's not even practical. Because as you bear fruit for God, you're, he's going to purge you. He's going to yeah. purge. He may kind of trim you a little bit so you can bear much fruit. Yeah. Now you are clean to the word which I have spoken unto you. Yeah. He said, abide in me and I and you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. But see that's where the problem is. Because we can do a lot of things. Without God. Right? You could work. You could do stuff. But it's a bunch of nothing. When it has no eternal value, when it has no eternal purpose, it's an accumulation of wealth that doesn't benefit the kingdom of God. It's nothing. It is a waste of your time. And it's nothing. But if everything that you do, in word or in deed, you can do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you're seeking His will, whatever it is that you're doing, then it amounts to something, because when you give it to God, He can multiply it and work out for the purposes of the Lord. Does that make sense to you? If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered to gather men, gather them, and cast them into the fire. It's talking about hell and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in me. You shall ask what you will, because now you're in tune with the will of God. And it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. How? That you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. What fruit is your fruit? Some say, well, it's the fruit of the Spirit. Well, it's the fruit, singular, of the Spirit. We should have the fruit of the Spirit. 
right? What does the fruit of the Spirit? Love. How many fruit? fruits? How many fruits? One. Fruit. Of the Spirit. Amen? One fruit. Of the Spirit. There's many characteristics like there is one God. But there's many attributes. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Ra. Are you with me? It's the fruit of the Spirit. How many ingredients in this one fruit? Nine, right? What are they? Faith, right? Love, some say love. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Temperance is self control. We should bear that, right? But the fruit he's talking about, what does the vine produce? Right, when you go to Central California, what does the vine produce? Come on, smell it. Grapes, right? So what would grapes produce pineapples? No. So if you're attached to, if you're the fruit of your father, right? Because he gave birth to you, right? If you reproduce yourself, what, what would it be? What would it be? Huh? What would it be? What are you? A human. So, so you're the fruit that he's talking about is another human. Amen? That makes sense? The fruit he's talking about is another human. Why? Because Jesus is not die for grapes. He did not die for things. He died for people. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? So, so this fruit that he's talking about are people. Because that's the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ to die for people. Amen? Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. How many want to be covered and under the love of God? Even as I kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be holy. There's nothing better than a soul winner's joy. Can I get a witness out? There's nothing better when you've shared the gospel with somebody whether they receive it or not. Christ and the devil. 
If you're united, partnered with somebody that doesn't believe, the Lord considers it demonic. Amen? He says it like that. He compares it between him and the devil. How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be with God between God's temple and idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them, walk in them. I will be their God and they will be my people, their car. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers. And separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. How many want to be welcomed by God? And I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. In the Old Testament, uh, which is our schoolmaster, it teaches us to be separated. They could not, they could not intermarry. They could not uh, plow their field and plant uh, peanuts and wheat on one. It has to be separated. It was under the penalty of death if they even commingled their clothing with cotton and another kind of fabric. So it's either hundred percent wool. If there's all the esther there, that person should be killed. Mm. You're like, wow, that's, oh, that's too legalistic. Oh. Yeah, how well, you argue with them? That's, read it, it's in the Bible. Why is that? Because God wants to communicate uh, without a doubt uh, to his church. Somebody say to his church. He's not communicating that to the world. That's foreign to them. To the world coming to church, being godly, being holy, celebrating the, the birth of Jesus is foreign to them. Yes. He's communicating it to his bride. Right. Separation. Yes. Some say separation. Separation. Why? Because God is going to marry us someday. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be in a union with us someday. Not with unbelievers. Yeah. Right. And so. We have to constantly ask ourselves, how far along are we in the de 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 developmental process in the womb of the church? Yeah. How far along are you? Have you asked somebody that's pregnant, right? What did you tell them? How, how, how far along are you? They say, oh, nine weeks. Well, you, you know what? Maybe, don't, don't make a mistake asking somebody, are you pregnant? And they're not. <laughs> He said, no, I'm not, I'm just fat. <laughs> I actually had a good friend, and the our good friend, oh, are you pregnant? She goes, no. <laughs> Her claws came out. Like, yeah, you're on your own. <laughs> Hallelujah. But how far are we? Because it mirrors, our, our, the, the birth of a child of a fetus, it mirrors our developmental process in the church. Amen. First, there's an implantation where the egg and the sperm meets, and that's our new birth. Romans 6, verse 1 to 5, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin and live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death, but like Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even though we should also walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted, there's that implantation, that union, that new birth of the water and the spirit, with, which mirrors the implantation of the egg in the mother. Right. And there's life. Right. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Right. In about five weeks, the heart, the tiny heart begins to be. It's tiny. You can, there's a solid ground. You, you can hear it. Proverbs 4.20. My child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep in your heart. For they bring life to those who find them. Healing to their whole body. Guard your heart. Yeah. Turn to somebody and tell them, guard your heart. Above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Whatever the condition of your heart is, that's where you're heading. That's the course of that. That's the heading of your life. Don't get to the point where Proverbs 5.11 says, And thou mourn at the last when that flesh and that body are consumed. 
and say, oh, how have I hated instruction in my heart, despised reproof. And I have obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly gives us hope. Almost. Which means God can still snatch us out. Hallelujah. Would you worship her for a little bit? For the way out? In Jesus' name, would you thank him that you still have life because while there's still breath, there is hope. In Jesus' name, our heart proceeds out of it, the issues of life. We've got to guard it, not allow anything other than God to enter. We've got to guard our emotions in Jesus' name. Don't be attached to things. Don't be too attached to people. Get attached to God. Let your umbilical cord be attached to the Lord. Fall in love with him over and over again. How do you know you're in love with him? You think about it. Yes. You talk to him. You communicate with him. Yes. Spend time with him. Yeah. In about six to seven weeks, the mouth, the ears begin to form the intestines, the brain, the hands and the feet, but they kind of look like little paddles. Begin to form. First Peter 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow them. If so be you have tasted that the Lord is Gracious. Amen. Praise God. When we first come to God, we come because we have a need. Amen? Amen. God meets that need, but at some point, He expects us to grow. We can't stay a baby all the time. Yes. Because at 11 weeks, it starts kicking, it starts stretching. Hebrews 12, 1 to 4, therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony, to the truth. Let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary way, and that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patient endurance. How many are building up your endurance? And steady and active persistence. How are you persistent and say, I'm not giving up? Because God's not going to give up on you. The appointed course of the race that is set before us, looking away from all that will distract the Jesus who is the leader and the source of our faith. Giving the first incentive of our belief and is also its finisher. Bringing it to maturity and perfection where your faith begins to mature. Where your faith begins to be complete. He for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him endured the cross, despising, ignoring the shame, and is now seated on the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. So he's saying, think about the God of glory that is all powerful, that humbled himself to die for you. Could you do you could, could you try to understand how much humility God has and how much love he has for mankind? To actually humble himself. We can't even comprehend God. He is beyond comprehension. But that God, the visible manifestation of God, which is Jesus Christ, would actually take on the form of his creation and allow himself to be humiliated even the death of a cross. As powerful as it is, as he is. Right. Driven by love for you. Amen. He cut the love. Now many people will do that. Right. For adventure, for a good man, man, one might die. Right. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Would you yeah. imagine the humility yeah. and the love that he has to allow himself? He said, then consider that. Yeah. That you won't grow weary or exhausted. Losing heart and relaxing. Now I understand why Bishop Wright is against relaxing. Because when you do something relaxing, it disconnects you with your father. 
There's a big difference between relaxing and having some recreation where you're rejuvenated. If anything that you do to relax disconnects you from God, watching something that, you know, is ungodly, serving the web, going on social media, oh, what they post, what they hate, my God, I could care less what they hate. I don't know why people think that's cool, you know. I just can't figure it out. I'll sleep a little bit. I'm not talking to you. Right? <laughs> but you, you have to be careful what you do that it doesn't relax you, but it recreates you. Because he said, You have not yet struggled and fought agonizingly against sin, nor have you yet resisted and withstood to the point of pouring out your own blood. We might get to that point where you and I will be persecuted and there will be physical blood still. Are you ready? Or are you just, well, you know, if I serve God, I'll never go through trials. Really? Tell Job that. Tell Paul that. Well, I'll never starve to tell him that. Then. And he's preparing us. There might come a time, and they did. Wholesale Christians in, in, in the arenas of the Caesars were entertainment and sport and killed by the hundreds, by the thousands. What can allow us to go through that by remaining in the womb of the church, having a connection, not allowing anyone or anything to severe that connection with God? Why? Because He's coming back to us. Right. Because He's marrying us. Ephesians 5 27, that He might present it to Himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. What is that talking about? The Old Testament. When they offer the sacrifice, a lamb, they, they, they look it up. They, they, they expect it. It can't have a spot. It can't have a wrinkle. It's got to be perfect. And he, Jesus Christ, is perfect. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blood. How's the possible? How can I be holy without blood? It's only possible by the blood of the Lamb covers. Yeah. Only possible by every time we fall. Huh? Amen. That we confess our sins. God cannot confess uh, a sin that will you. God cannot rather really forgive a sin you will not confess. Right. How do you confess? You think about it? No, you speak it out with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. That's why prayer is important. Amen. So there's a time period where the Lord says, time's up. You've been in the womb for too long. Time to go. Whether you're ready or not, whether you remain in the womb of the church or in the womb of the world, if you remain in the womb of the church, you're going to turn a life in the womb of the world. You're going to condemnation that's our choice or the series of our choices in this womb. Well, we're getting out of here one way or another. We're not going to live here forever. This world's not our home. Remember that. You're in a world. You're passing through. Literally. See, before the baby is delivered, there are contractions in the womb. The pain. All the women say that there are the moms of this. Right? You're painful. I remember Dylan, I think it was. Yeah, Dylan was kind of overdue. And so we went, she was going to get uh, induced. But before she was going to get induced, contractions happened. And she happened to be holding my hand, and I didn't know she had that strong of a grip. <laughs> I mean, she was in pain, and so I was, was I, <laughs> in Jesus' name. But the baby, when once it breaches the womb, and it starts breathing, crying, it's yeah. got to get out. Yeah. Because the contractions can kill it. It's got to get out once it starts crying. What a beautiful analogy when the promise of Abraham begins to fall into this world. And the baby is crying. And the contractions are getting more and more severe in intervals. And it's saying it's time to get out. It's time to fly out of here. It's time to be raptured out of the church. Right. 
The contractions are started. The contraction pushes the baby out of the womb. It has started in the church if you've been paying attention. The persecution has started in the next four years. Our liberties, our religious liberties will be curtailed. We're going to contend with the LBTQ, LBTQ, RST. All those agendas, we're going to contend with it. But God will fulfill the promise he made to Abraham. Amen. Hallelujah. When that baby starts crying, the contraction starts uh, getting more intense. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Lift up your head unto the hills from which cometh your help. For your help is in the name of the Lord. Lift up your head. For your redemption draweth nigh. In Jesus' name. Yes. Galatians 3.14. The, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles. What is the blessing of Abraham? For Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Yeah. All the nations of the world will be blessed by Abraham. Yeah. All the families of the world. There will be a great worldwide outpouring that God will do, which will not be contained in a building. Right. And that's a sign. It's time to go. Amen. It, God will eject us into the harvest field. When the Bible says, praying, therefore, that the Lord will send the English word. Uh, but if you look it up the Greek, yeah. it means to forcefully eject yeah. into the harvest field. Don't be afraid when the contractions intensify. It's not going to kill you. Right. Amen? Because we're not appointed on the wrath. Right. Those of you that believe you're going to go through the seven years of wrath, of tribulation, hey, go for it. I believe 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath. For God has not appointed us unto wrath. God has not appointed his bride unto wrath. God has not appointed his body unto wrath. It's already suffered. The body of Christ. It's not appointed unto wrath. Because of the wrath of God will be poured out on the three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. The Bible says that he will tread the white press of the fierceness of the wrath of God. And he said blood will flow as high as a horse's bridle. All the way about 180 miles long. Yes. 200 million people plus. From here. Past the border of San Diego. Did you imagine? That's how long. Of the fierceness of the wrath of God. He has not appointed us unto wrath. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Who died for us. That whether we are wake, not woke, awake or alive or asleep, then we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together and build up or edify. One another, even as you also do. Amen. God knows what he's doing. He's in power, past tense, the church. And it's time for us to use that power. Yes. He has empowered. See, most of us are still waiting for the power. No, you've already been filled with power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You have been given authority. I mean, you want to believe that? That you have been given authority in Jesus' name. It's time you use authority. It's time to find things that come against your mind and say, no, you're not going to occupy space in my mind. My mind is renewed in the Lord. Luke chapter 10, 17, then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even demons are subject unto us through your name, Jesus. Yeah. Right. Before they filled with the Holy Ghost, the seventh. Wow. Without the Holy Ghost, they cast out devils. And here, you and I were afraid of oh, someone's going to be my God, yep. you have authority. Yeah. The greatest threat of the devil is to intimidate us, yeah. to make us fearful. That's why God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. 
And he said that the man saw Satan fall like lightning from him. He said, let me tell you something, boys. I kicked him out. At the speed of 180,000 miles per second. Boom. And I would love to see him one day. It's God kicking him out. Like a soccer ball. Or a professional tennis player with a top spin on his head. He says, Behold, I give you the authority. You have authority right now to trample on serpents and scorpions, use it. And over all the power or the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Does anybody believe that in this house? That that is for you right now, it's for you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names, your names are written. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. And that our Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. Jesus began to rejoice. And said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it would seem good in you. Do you know God hides his word to those around him? Yep. Oh, I thought God just wants to save everybody. Yes, he does. But he won't cast his pearls before swines. Right. Have you ever wondered why Acts 2 38 is in the middle? Hidden, not in that book of Genesis, the beginning or the end, uh, that somebody would just stumble into it? Because he hides it. Right. Go back one verse or one slide. He hides it. That you have hidden these things. Could you thank God that he has not hidden it to you? Could you thank him deeply from your heart that he chose you to understand? So I'm going to reveal the mysteries of God to this group of people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal myself to my sons and daughters at the life house that they can grow in it. Amen. And I'm giving them authority as they're being perfected in the womb. Could you thank him this morning? And even as we're still growing as newborn babes, uh, amen, God uh, has more for us. Could you thank him uh, that he has not hidden it from you? If you cultivate a spirit of gratitude, if you cultivate a spirit of praise and worship unto God, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. God is going to see to it that you're going to make it. For God resists the proud, but give more grace unto the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're being formed in the womb of the church so that when we're ready, God said, it's time to die. Yeah. Physical. Time to stop breathing. Isn't that ironic that the older you are, the more wisdom you have, the more love you are, the more balanced, the more tempered, hopefully, the more mature. Now, time to die. I often thought, I thought about this, I told this to people. Wouldn't it be better, do you think, if we were born as an adult with love, compassion, temperance, and we just gradually become younger? You know, so however old you are, or maybe you're born 70 years old, 75 or 80, and then every day you become younger and younger until you become a baby, and then you just you die. Way better than that, because you know, as you're old, as you get older, you have more wisdom, right? When, once you become a parent, you could look back and say, "Oh, wow, I was stupid with a capital S of a child to my parents." All the parents say, "Did you think that?" After I have kids, I go, oh, I'm so sorry, Mom. Literally. 
I apologize for my dad. He goes, what's wrong? I, I, I just, I'm just dumb. Well, what are you talking about? I, I'm just beginning to realize that I, I'm grateful that he was. You remember that question you gave me, you know, when I was going to college studying mechanical engineering? And there's some of those semesters I actually didn't enroll. I took the money and party that semester. I'm so sorry. I was big enough already. He didn't want to beat me up. He wanted to. <laughs> Isn't that ironic that, you know, now that you have more sense, it's time to die. But that's designed by God. He designed it that way. Because we're maturing in Him. As we're being formed in the womb of the church, He says, okay, son, you're ready. And so Paul, he realized when he was going to die. He said, the time of my departure is at hand. Yeah. I believe if we serve God as we should and get connected with God as close as we should, he will not hide things from us. He said, shall I hide the things from my prophet seeing they have the spirit of God? Shall I hide that? This thing from Abraham, seeing he'll be the father of many nations, that so I hide it from my prophets and the spirit of Christ and spirit of prophecy. Paul knew when he was going to die. Wouldn't it be great to know when you're going to die? Hezekiah was told. Was it Elijah? The king says, send your arms in order. You could, today you're going to die. This sickness is unto death. And he pouted. The Bible says he, he turned in his bed and faced the wall. He said, Lord, I've done all these things for you. And before the prophet could leave the outer court of the palace, God began to speak to the prophet, turn back and tell Hezekiah, I've heard his prayers, I'll add 15 more years to his life. And he came, he became from the greatest king to the worst king in Israel. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to stay in the womb longer when it's time to leave. I pray that when it's my time to leave, that God will let me know and give me time if I need it. And I know I will. The time of repentance, clean my soul and get out of here. Right. Well, what about your family? Who's going to take care of them? God. Well, God has been taking care of my family all this time. Right. Hello? Well, I thought you were. Well, God actually has been taking care of all families of the world all this time. Oh, no, no, let me phrase. God actually holds the world in his hand. Oh, oh God, he has been flying the stars and stayed in orbit. Oh, God actually is God's, and the world and the universe is in God. It's in containing him. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. He's going to take care of you. I said it last Sunday, maybe Sunday before last. God's never performed a miracle. We call it a miracle. But it's not a miracle to God. Because the universe is contained in Him. That will help your faith the next time you need a miracle. It's only a miracle to you, to God. All things are possible to them that believe. In Jesus' name, as we mature, we believe more. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And we can't remain in it. Right. What does it mean when you tell somebody to grow up? Does it not mean to be mature? 1 John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away. The world is deteriorating, as we speak. That's why there will be a new heaven and a new earth. It's deteriorating. They say the sun will probably stop shining. Maybe not literally, but the Bible does say there will be signs in heaven. Right. The sun will refuse to give its life in that glorious day of the appointing of Lord Jesus Christ. 
But he, the word passes away, and the lust thereof, or the intense desires, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Would you pray right now that his power will cause you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, that you will live up and desire to do the will of God as we are being formed in the world of the church. Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Yes. Would you stand this morning? You're in a womb. How far are you in the development of process? Only that's between you and God. You can take a victory of yourself. And it's not your strength, not by my power, but by His Spirit. That's why we need the infinity and the continual flow of living water and Spirit. Genesis 49, verse 25. Even by the God of thy Father, who shall Help thee. God is your help. Mm -hmm. God is an ever present help in time of trouble. And the Almighty, notice, He is giving us an assurance based on His attributes that He will help us as God your Father. Anybody knows that has a good father that the good father protects. Yeah. I heard a preacher friend, he was in a mall with his grandson. Preacher friend, very, very relaxed person, funny guy, full of the Holy Ghost. Somebody tried to kidnap his grandson for their shelter. Man, I don't know where he found a two by four, but he chased that guy. You don't mess with a father over the children. No, it doesn't matter how big and bad you are, you, you go down with the money. Without a fire, over with a fire, you, you, you fix it, you hurt. So he's assuring us, not just as a father, and by the Almighty. He cut them. That's why there's only one God, because there can only be one Almighty. If you have three, the others don't have any might. A third of the might is not Almighty. Hello? Yes. And this is what he promised. Who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven? Blessings of the deep that lieth under things that are hidden that he's going to reveal. Blessings of the breast and blessings of the womb yeah. as you're being formed, as you and I are being nourished with our mother, the church, heavenly Jerusalem, with the Father watching over with all of his power. That's the design of God. And we're fixing to see the greatest revival this world's going to see. And it is the will of your Father to begin to exercise your authority. So that whatever happens when that great outpouring begins to flow, that we have the assurance of our Father, the blessings. Yes, yes. That comes from Him. Thank the sustenance. You, Thank you. In the formation and the completion and maturity until we're ready to be offered as a living sacrifice for Paul said, But the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I, I've run my course, I've finished my race. Therefore, there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which my Father has laid for me, not me only, but for them also. Love is appearing. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's for us. Would you rejoice this morning that you're being formed in the church? Would you